and welcome to the Reaper. So today we've got another tactical debrief with just me and yourself. So the mission was um, that we were defending 10 submarines. You can see the submarines are there and an aircraft carrier that we've got there. We've got a hell of a load, as you can see, of F5s and also a load of Harriers which are uh, taking off from the aircraft carrier and uh, on their way from there. So um, our mission is to protect these subs, which represent our 10,000 subs on YouTube, because there's 10 subs. Uh, we've got to get them over here to Bullseye safely, but we've got the Evil Reds, the ESF guys, which are attacking. Um, now, it was an absolutely massive mission. It took me like 10 hours or something to do the movie, so there are so many engagements, we won't be able to go through all of them. So we'll just look at the most interesting engagements and rough tactics and see what happens. So stand by. I just want to see this little flyover because it was cool. We definitely waste, won't waste any more time after that. Nyom. Uh, we've got Hammer, uh, the four guys on the ship, led by um, P-Man. I think Static was leading another four Harriers. Then Sherman was leading Sabre, which was four F5s. And then someone else who I've forgotten was leading uh, another four F5s. So that's what, 16 in total. Anyway, let's stop wasting time. Stand by as I get to the first bit of combat. So you can see there wasn't any particular blue tactic. We just want, we had one group who was uh, circling around the carrier group. Um, and then intermediate guys here who were just zipping kind of eastbound roughly. One guy in the mountains looking in the mountains. And another group who was kind of 10, 20 miles out this way for an early intercept. So the first thing that happens is that Blood's Vigans are coming down this canyon. And when they do that, they are pretty much impossible to find. We don't really have any radars on our side. Um, the F5s have basic radars, but it's not an intercept radar, and it's extremely hard to, to spot anyone with it at range, and the Harriers don't have any type of um, radar at all for this kind of thing. The ship had a small radar, but it, only, uh, it was only useful for about 10 miles, so about to kind of here roughly. So, uh, Blood is going to get through and, uh, without interception, I guess. You can see him even over here where he's not really terrain masking. Still very hard to see. They're moving very fast. They're well camouflaged and they're very low. So, almost impossible for us to see. Cap and Sherman there getting very close. In fact, Spectre, uh, not sure if Spectre was on comms. I didn't really hear from him, but he looked like he does intercept. And he has indeed intercepted, so that is interesting, so why don't we set that up. So we've got Spectre, who looks like he's seen them, his burner's on, he's going to try and catch up. The problem is these Vigans are very fast, even when they're heavily loaded, they're extremely fast. So the F5 is still going slower. Okay, he's now matching their speed, he's now catching up. And he's 1.6, 1.5 miles behind, that's just about within limits of uh, firing with a Fox 2. So he can actually just about get a kill here, if he, if he can get a tone. Uh, you can see that the uh, front two Vigans have launched... Ah, you can see you can see one going out there, look. Um, yep, 1.4 miles, that's just within the limit of an AIM-9 on a, on a cold chase. Um, you can see we've got RB-75s, those are what? Those are Mavericks um, going out for the subs. And... Tender's hit, good job from Spectre, I didn't know that happened, so that's it. first blood to us. Now, these Mavericks should have hit and killed the subs, so let's see what actually happens, because I don't know what happened. I think, yeah, one sub hit, two sub, that absolutely pasted those subs. Uh, now, um, I made a mistake here, I used nuclear subs, I meant to use the diesel subs. The diesel subs, one hit would kill them, um, but with these subs, it looks like they need lots of hits, so it was massively unfair from the beginning. Those, sub, those subs should have been sunk by those Mavericks. So, that's a bit silly, but... Never mind, it's done now. So we were sharp when you ran it. So the Blues were always going to win, but it was a good fight nonetheless. Right, so um, these guys have got their missiles away, and now they're burning cold. Um, they'll be a lot faster now because they have clean airframes. Um, uniform Kilo, don't know this guy, so new guy. Oh, it was a Saturday, so it was open to everyone. So we've got loads of new guys. In fact, about 50% were new guys. Monty new, Kilo new, Spectre new. So they're all guys that we don't know, uh, but it's fine. And it's good to spot talent this way as well. Right, Uniform Kilo, we think, has uh, spotted the Vigans. That's good. And he's got an AIM-9 out at, that's going to be about a mile and a half to two miles, which is, uh, wasn't AIM-9 Mike yet. Yeah, should just about reach him. 
That's for blood. And he's just merged with trash. Is blood going to get hit? Yikes, look at that. Blood maneuvers just burns it at the last second. It's only He can only escape that because it goes so fast. Nearly 700 knots true. That's pretty cool. Uh, Spectre's back in the fray now. He's nearly up to 700 knots and giving chase. This um, He's had a good shot uniform kilo, but it's just too slow, obviously, isn't a Harrier, which is a subsonic jet, so he's never going to catch up. Um, so a bit of bad luck there. So it's only these shows how... And by the time the rest of us are vectored onto target... Which has only it's only been about kind of ten seconds since they've dropped their bombs. The rest of us are all get infected in P Man's coming in, Blast is coming in, Monty's coming in, Hatsu's coming in, Cap's coming in, Sherman's coming in, everyone's been back to on target now basically. But by the time because they're vegans and they're so fast, by the time we get there, which is you know, they're already five miles out and going faster than we can go. So they're really hot ah, saying that, Uniform Kilo has just got another shot on this guy on trash. It's kind of one point five miles and it's a kill. Uniform kilo, nice work. So these two guys, excellent work. Um, we've got uh, aim nine out from Spectre. Oh, that was right back there. So there's a dead missile. Can Spectre close up for... Oh, Spectre's got no weapons left. Can he close up on blood? 1.7 miles. And that Vigan is faster than F5. And look, look at the speed difference. That F5's topping out now. 640 knots thereabouts. The Vigan's just getting into its stride. It's on its way to 800 knots. So it's got a 1.8 miles, so that's just slightly on the ambitious side, 1.8 miles. And Blood sees that, which is really good work. And he scrubs that, he does some manoeuvring, scrubs that. It allows this guy to... No, and he's still accelerating away. So he traded a bit of speed for some... Put some angles in there and scrub that missile. And there's, he probably could have beaten it just going straight on this so fast. And that is the end of that, really. No one's ever going to catch him up. Aim 9 from there, I don't know what that was. Static, just blasting an Aim 9 away. Um, yep. Oh, and a long shot, another aim nine mic, long shot from Gumbo, but it was never going to hit. And another one from Sherman, God knows what Sherman's firing at. Dangerous. Probably would have went for our guy. Not going to catch up, are we? No, and he's three miles away. I don't think we need to really follow that through. <laughs> Look at us all giving chase now. And um, these guys are starting to realise this, you know, it's not going to happen, so we're starting to turn around. That's pretty cool. Blood knows it's safe at this point. And... On the go, Tail has made a lovely intercept book. I don't know how he's managed that, but he's uh, he's on for an intercept. And he's going to clash with these guys. Tail's got a aim line papper out at these guys. Didn't know any of this happened. I didn't even see it in the movie. Wow, look. Oh, he almost hit this guy. And he's got a merge. Not sure what Tail's doing, who he's flying after. I think, no, I think he's going for the Vigan still. No, he's definitely merged. Uderosa, and we now have a dogfight. That's interesting. Uderosa's uh, got, uh, seen him, and he's got on his tail. Tail, strangely named tail. Oh, he's blacked out. Tail blacked out. Let's quickly go and see what happened there. So, tail is coming around here. I think he's firing a blood knock, although I'm really not sure. Then turns. Starts. Ah, there. He was going really fast. 650. Oh, I see. He was going 650 knots, and then spotted that it merged with these guys. So he went into a right bank, loaded up the G, but because he's going so fast, that G, he just over G, that's 9.7 G there, so he's passing out right now. 10 G, yep, he's fully passed out. Nearly 11 G peak, and he's no longer in control, he's fully passed out. And just goes and crashes into the sea. So there's another example of how easy it is to black out. Well, we saw this in the last mission, when you're going super fast, supersonic or, or transonic, just a small pull on the back stick will pass you out in pretty much all planes. So, um, yep, so something to learn there. Right, I think that's that attack over. Uh, stand by as I go to the next one. don't think there's an engagement here, but it's just a great show of how chaotic everything is when you haven't got radars. Look at all these blues, all searching. Everyone's constant alert, searching. And um, you've got Sonic Dust comes in in a red um, MiG-21, and everyone's just like, you know, a, f a few metres away from each other. But no, it's so chaotic having to interrogate. There's none of these planes have active IFF, so they all have to see each other and determine with your eyes whether it's a good guy or a bad guy. It's really hard to do when you're going 500, 600 knots or whatever. Uh, so everyone's just flying through each other like a massive maze of spaghetti, but no one really gets time to make an IFF. It's very dangerous for friendly fire as well. We were expecting friendly fire on this mission because we've got non-full-time reapers in here, um, and we probably will see some friendly fire later on. 
um, for the guys who did Friendly Fire, we've got some educate in our educational video section. We've got some videos on Friendly Fire and preventing it. So go through that and read it because we've had to learn the hard way. But we're very good now. We haven't had a single Friendly Fire in this month, 10 days or something. So um, it does work. Anyway, you can see there just an example of how, um, how close we were. And we had no idea these guys were about. Um, we didn't really spot them once. We didn't call anything in. That just shows how chaotic it can be in this kind of combat. See these guys, Spectre again. He's kind of seen this figure and kind of not. Does he go after him? Yeah, he does. Okay, Spectre seems to have good eyes. He's seen this guy, seen this Vigan. But he's now chasing a Vigan out of combat and nothing catches a Vigan when you're low. Simple as that. And I guess Odd is going to fly away. And he does. And Spectre gives up. So, lots of. Um, Flying around each other, not much bang bang at the moment, so let's carry on. Okay, Udorosh is coming in, this looks promising. And uh, UK is merging with Sonic. Right, so Udorosh has punched through our uh, useless defences and he's making a move. What is an AIM 9 doing? Static keeps firing AIM 9s at people from long range. What's going on there? Static's flying along. Just flies an aim nine at nothing. At a friend or something. At Cap. Hey, Static, don't you, Cap? Why would you do that? That's not right at all. Okay, so no one died, so let's just ignore that, I guess. Uh, anyway, Uderos is coming in. Uh, Cap, I'm just doing some slow circling of the subs. And Uderos uh, has seen me, and Cap is it's a dead man. And pow, R60, Cap's out of there. Has anyone spotted him? Gumbo should have spotted him, really. He was head on. You the rest of me off. Come on, stack, save me, save me. And that was a nice hit and run, really. Um, now, I would have called in, um, I would have called in the guys, so in they come. In comes Sherman. I'm trying to vector him by eye. Also, Spectre's in. Let's set this up. Okay, Sherman's 1.5 miles behind. I don't know if he's got missiles or not. Hopefully he has. And he's got one out, 1.5 miles. That's just about killable. And it was a bad shot. It didn't lock. Sometimes if you don't get that uh, 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 tone bang on before you fire, it can you can have a, uh, a fail like that. Lots going on, so let's have a look here. Stand by. So we've got another AIM-9 Papa from Sherman, and how many miles out was that? That was... Pew Pew, 1.6 miles, just about doable for an AIM-9. Also, we've got P-Mans come storming in at 550 knots. I don't know how we got in there, but it's great work. Also, Uniform Kilo is, is merging on. The thing is about these Harriers, they just haven't got the legs to catch up, but that guy's 700 knots. Even Sherman probably won't have the legs on that, thinking about it. Does the MiG see the missile? It doesn't see it, but has it got the legs to get there? Look at that. Look at that. It's flying in formation with that missile. So it was just slightly too ambitious for such a fast target. On the good side, Uderosa is now slowing down. I don't know why. Maybe a limit of his jet or something. And Sherman is getting faster. Sherman's up to 700 knots, which is great. It's now guns, guns, guns. Uderosa is getting slower and slower and slower. I don't know why. 440 knots. Sherman's over 700. Now we've got to watch the classic... Um, um, uh, over speed now, so we've got 300 knots different, um, so it's really hard to judge your speed and to slow down in time Sherman's really good at this, so let's see what he does his air brakes on, slowing down guns, 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 gets a hit there, which is nice, and he's doing exactly what you should do, he's going up for a high yo-yo, which is going to um, so he's going, you see how he's come up here, he flips over so that he can keep eyes on the target, he goes high to increase his distance of travel so that he can uh, basically slow down and the more tra distance he travels um, compared to the target you know the more he falls back compared to the target and gets behind the target so it's absolute perfection and it's really hard when you're up there to, to, to keep an eye on the target I really struggle at it so it's really good at going up half a mile or something or whatever that is quarter of a mile keeping eyes on the target against the ground and then falling back behind him matching your speed and he's done it perfectly he's come out like like 20 knots per behind him, which is absolutely perfect. So that's great to see. 
Um, and he's almost within guns range now. He's going to get those afterburners on. He's got to start speeding up now. Hatsu, I don't think, no, I don't think he sees it. So many more guns, guns, guns. And the problem is, oh, he's got another hit as well. So Udorosa is getting absolutely pasted. And Sherman's pulled out, he's low on fuel, or whatever, he's just realised he's not going to win this. But Squiddle is coming in like an absolute belter, so that's turned to him. Okay, Squiddle's in 700 knots, he's at 1.8 mile shot on a cold target that's a little bit ambitious. It is within the missile's parameters, but if the MiG does anything, then it will probably miss, so... Yeah, it's just scrubbed that, I think. Yep, so Udorosa saw it coming. Um, put some vertical angle in, scrub the missile just enough. It's great. Uh, it's allowed Squiddle to close though, so if he's got another missile now, it can hit within one mile pretty easily. And there it is. That's a 1.1 mile shot. That should be a hit. Pow, and it is right up the tailpipe, but still would have survived. One thing about these MiG 21s is they're extremely durable for whatever reason. Um, so that's, that's two gun hits, 20 mil cannon, and. Um, a Fox 2 it survived. Uh, Udorosa is now struggling for speed. He's slowing down. Look, he may have lost his afterburner. Squiddle is extremely fast. Now, just got to watch for the overspeed again. This is really hard to do, so slow down, slow down. He's going too fast. He's getting too excited. Should have been brakes on already. No, he's got it under control. Well done. Perfectly under control. And he's got a third guns hit with 20 more cannons. He's still flying. And this is a beautiful chase now. Look at this. So all he's got to do is hold back. He's got more manoeuvrability than that MiG-21. The MiG-21 is probably damaged. So he needs to get a bit more speed on now. So this is a bit like flying formation in a while. I like to get my make my guys fly in formation. It helps you with things like this. Judging um, a hostile's distance by eye, which is what you have to do when you're doing formation. Um, and so you can get beautiful chases like this. And look at the distance. It's not really changing a huge amount. You know, when you're considering it, you're traveling 600 knots. It's keeping beautiful formation. And just got to sit there, get to the um, distance that he wants, and then black away. He's lost a bit too much speed there, so he's now got to go burners on. A few shots to scare him, slow him down a bit. Small turn from Rosa. Okay, we've now got the speed advantage. We're going to start closing back up to 1,000 feet, which is your proper kill range. is amazing. He survived so long. He's doing really well. We've got 20, 30 knots on him, closing him 1,000 feet. Now we're at guns range. Oh, so close. Brilliant chase. Oh, and finally he takes him down. So that was absolute um, beautiful chase. Took ages, but it was pretty cool to see. And a couple of things that were pointed out there. So, very good. Let's skip to the next bit of action. So we're going to move on to the next bit of action. Uh, we've got hostiles. They were, you know, came... Finished their last attack or got shot down, and then they've recharged the batteries and they're back out. Uh, you've got two ship of Vigans heading over the sea, so they're going to kind of come out here and come into the side, I guess. Ten, uh, yep, that's fine. And a two ship of uh, distraction force MiG 21s. Uh, now we had Tail and X Commander out here who were doing um, far defense, so you know they were like 60 miles in front of the uh, carrier or something like that. Um, and yeah, this Tail was, we just, uh, Tail was did really well. He's got really good eyes. Much better than me. You can spot guys miles away, which most of us can't do. Okay, so look, he's seen these guys over 20 miles away head on, which is like impossible to do. So I don't know how he's managed it, but he has. And he's now uh, going in for the assault and he's going low and fast. So it's going to be completely invisible to those hostiles, which is great to see. Uh, right. So nothing we do at the moment. So let's skip forward. So he's going slightly flanking now. Seven miles. Again, we're only Fox 2s in these jets, so um, you can't take long-range shots. Absolute maximum head-on is going to be about five miles or something, so I expect him to see it th fire at three or four, I guess. Okay, lovely and low, so these guys just can't see him against the background. Uh, there's one criticism against these MiGs. They were flying a little bit too high, which is what allowed Tail to see them come in for this kind of side belly shot. Okay, that's, I mean, that's within a mile and a half, so that's definitely a kill shot, unless they do something amazing. Pow! Uderosa's out of the game, right in the cockpit. And another. That one's missed. Asked too much angle of that missile, it just couldn't do that. So now we've got to merge. Put that up. <coughs> so we've got a good starting position for tail. We've got a few knots over this guy. 
Oh, he's lost. Uh, he lost situation awareness. Lost tally of this guy. Um, so, but that's that's not a bad move. So you see what happened there. He um, got to this point, lost tally on this guy, which happens easily. You know, he might have been against a forest or something. Um, and the important thing at that point is to uh, be very positive and assertive. Do something um, uh, very very positive and full. So what he's done is rather than kind of spinning around looking for this guy. Um, he's realised that he can't see him anymore, so safest thing is burners on and just max speed out of there. And that's exactly what he's done. So as soon as he lost tally on that guy, burners on, flying up to 600 knots. So he's done something very positive and assertive, and um, and, and that's made him safe. Whereas a lot of people, maybe myself included, would have tried to kind of follow this jet and um, try and regain visual, um, which is a bit dilly-dally and puts you um, uh, quite vulnerable so this is a good move, just to blast your way out of combat. When you know you're safe, turn around and start again. So it's good work, so he's going to blast out there at 600 knots, you see, completely safe. Sonic doesn't really, I, I don't think you've got very good rear vision in this 21, so he's probably just playing it safe, putting countermeasures out and stuff like that. Which is fine. And Tail's done a, a good disengagement there. And there's nothing wrong with disengagement, um, it's, it's perfectly acceptable combat just to disengage and blast your way out and um, and either call your friends in, like he's doing here, or just fly out. Uh, so he's got safe, he's got five miles away. Sonic, uh, still a bit panicking. Sonic still thinks he's been chased, but he's not. We know he's not, of course. So he's erring on the side of caution, which is fine. He's going to make himself a target, though, unless he gets down and gets, uh, gets stealthy. So Tails, he's come out five miles or something. He's decided to safe. He's kept his speed over 650 knots, which is very good, and now he's turning back in. So that was great. Uh, that was great to play. You know, when I say the F when we watch our F15 matches, and I always say, don't be afraid to just charge out a max burn. You're completely safe if you do that. And turn in when you think it's safe. And he's done it here. And look how well it's worked. It's now head on, 700 knots, energy in the bank. Just doesn't see him in time. Remember, as well as seeing someone, you've got to visually IFF them as well. Um, uh, you can't just blast at anything you see in the sky, otherwise it'd be constant friendly fire. So. It looks like he's come in, he's not happy with the situation, and he's just burning out again. Or did he over No, it's just burning out again. 700 knots. As long as you keep your bird really fast, which is why I keep on it, everyone, keep your bird really fast in combat, you're pretty safe as long as you don't run into an enemy. And that's what he's doing. He's keeping above 650 knots, and it makes him pretty safe. He's turning... Okay, not sure what he's doing now. Oh, okay, he's interrogating this guy now. I saw this guy interrogating him. Deciding it's a friendly. Cadron's a bit... Doesn't really know what's going on at the moment and tail decides after that right i'm going back to a bit of safety calling in some more buddies let's get that forward a little bit yep and you can see look lovely work 700 knots out of combat completely safe positive assertive good flying king's coming in but he's coming too high if he's so vulnerable if you're going to go high like that luckily he's turned away just in time sonic's on the prowl going low sonic's going slow um, which I don't like, but if you're going to go slow, make sure you're going low, which he is at least. It makes him uh, much less vulnerable. Uh, Tails on a beautiful 10-mile pullout. I think he's going to come back into combat. We'll have to see. It's great to see um, good positive moves. You see, when you see a pilot which has nice straights, then turn, then a straight, then a turn, then a straight, it's really usually a good sign of a good pilot, whereas you see um, a, 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 a less confident pilot, you'll see kind of wiggly lines everywhere as they change their mind and change their mind and change their mind. Whereas confident pilots usually decent straight lines that they leave behind them because there's no indecision there. Cadron's flying around, but they haven't got really much hope of finding this MiG. Right, anyway, let's skip forward. I think there's not much more to see here. Good to see Tail still on burn, full burn. Look at that, completely safe. Uh, these Vigans are coming in, so uh, I see to see. So, ah, right. So. Just seeing what happens here. Yeah. So at this point, we see these Vigans. Um, we don't see them visually, and we don't see them with any kind of radar. But what we do see is their uh, nails, which is their... They're turning on their radar, um, to, I guess, to hunt to find the ships. They have a ship radar. And we can detect that. I did uh, with the RWRs. I did a video on RWRs in the educational section, if you want to see that. It's pretty cool. So we can roughly... We can't tell the distance, but we can tell the azimuth, which is the angle that they are. And so these guys tell me what azimuth they, they they see these guys at. And then I get these guys over here, whatever, to tell me the azimuth that they can see them at. And then we can triangulate roughly where they are at that point. 
and we can start putting things in place. And I remember, so we know roughly which direction they're in. So you see P-Man's boys heading out roughly to meet them. At this point, I speak to these guys and I say, okay, I'm going to put myself between the carrier and them, and then they've got to get past me. Um, the only annoying thing about that is these figures are really fast and um, spotting them in time is going to be difficult. So let's watch what happens. So P-Man's looking for them. Tiny criticism is these Harrys are up, up a little bit high, or at least two of them are. Almost impossible to spit up a spot of Vigan if you're above them on the water. So the Vigans start starting to see contacts and the Vigans are now putting their burners on. You see them speeding up, which is great work. You can see there that they've um, spotted this guy and done a small diversion. So they managed to get away there. P-Man has flown. P -Man has seen them. He's called in that he's uh, merged with them, I should imagine. There's not much he can do. He can't. He's, he's only in a Harrier, so he can't really catch them up. He's going to try. Uh, a Spectre coming in. Spectre's been vectored by P-Man onto them. You've got Squiddles being vectored by P-Man. There, that's a good approach. Look at that. Just a few hundred feet above the water. 500 feet above the water. That's more like it. So this guy will probably find them. Spectre goes past. Look how low that guy is. It's crazy. 150 feet, 140 feet, 130 feet. Look at that. Perfectly vectored. Squiddle's perfectly vectored at the perfect height. And he sees the guy. But the problem is now he's got to turn around, get fast enough to catch him up. And that's 600, not vegan. That's real hard. Uh, then we've got Cap. I'm coming out, but I'm a dickhead. I'm coming out the wrong way. Or, yep. Blast, he's coming the wrong way as well. So we've got our bearings mixed up a little bit. Meanwhile, these guys are coming along. Let's uh, squiddle up. Okay, so we're back. Um, so Squiddle is three miles behind, so there's nothing he can do at the moment. A Fox 2 simply can't go that far. Oh, okay, we're shooting at this guy. Stand by, let me check that out. Okay, ooh, it's almost within parameters there, so he's got 600 knots, the same as this guy, 1.5 miles. It's just within parameters for an M9P, so we're going to see it literally scrape off that Vigan. And look at that! Oh my word, it's literally, look at that, it's fine information with it, so it's meters, literally a few feet, all oh, caps finally and, uh, found where the hostiles are, and I'm now going to merge with them, but it's too late again, I'm too slow, I've got no chance of catching them up or intercepting them, yep, and we come, merge onto course, and by that time the Vigans have already escaped everything, and their bombs away, let me check out Spectre. Okay, on the plus side, Spectre's been burning and he probably got a, an empty airframe, so he's got 700 knots and he's catching trash up, which is good. Blood is bombed out, see if he, and he does make hits. Look, he, he's um, hit all of those subs, uh, those two subs, sorry. So those two subs should be dead, but I get the feeling they're not very realistic, so they've not died. So in reality, they probably did bomb all of the subs, or, or most of them, but never mind. Uh, Spectre is has caught up with Trash. I didn't see Spectre at all in this. Spectre just bombs away, and what's he hit? Yeah, it's killed one sub, so that would have been... No, that would have been another two subs down, if they'd worked properly. And now it's a full-on race. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got Spectre topping out a F5 at 655 knots, and we've got Trash 675 knots. And the, now the bombs are off of that Vigan. That Vigan will literally fly. And you'll see it start to pull away now, which is very annoying. And it is, it's got 30 knots on the F5, and she's just pulling away. And there's really pushing that F5. No one picked up Tender, no one saw Tender at all, so he got another few bombs off in the sub. So that's about, probably 60% of the subs they killed there. And he's just eking away now, look at that. I mean, we've got, I've capped, got 680 knots on a clean airframe, but just nothing we can do to catch them. The power of the Vigan, you see. You can just run away. Um, it's lucky that Spectre didn't have any missiles. Spectre could have killed him if he had missiles. Cap and Squiddle are determined to go and get him, but nothing catches 720 knots up. If only we had seen Blood there, we could have paced him. Blood's going slow, look. Just didn't see him against those uh, little trees and stuff. And in fact, look, we go right above him by 100 feet. Probably could have heard it. How frustrating. Cap's nearly hit 700 knots, but that guy's 800 knots now. That's the end of that engagement. They've successfully made a full engagement there. Well done. P-Man's not giving up, but again, nothing's really going to catch Tender up now. It's at 750 knots. Great work seeing that through. Yep. They do all escape. <laughs> Where does static come from? Hang on. 
So Static's not going to let them go. She's got a lovely intercept course here. She's going to have a good pop at them. Didn't I didn't know this happened. Onto an intercept of Trash. I don't know how she saw him, but did somehow. Got a missile out. That's way too far. That's four miles. So um, on a cold target, that's more than double. If only she's seen blood. Literally right there. Look at that. Oh, it's so annoying. They're flying in formation with each other. Oh, those vegans don't know how lucky they were. And Static's going to give up at that point, I imagine, because she can't catch up. Oh, look at that, how close. And launched the missiles, but no, it was no good. Never mind. Right, stuff's happening here now. Since all that's been happening, uh, there was also a fight here. Yes, I remember this. So there is a Uderosa, who's a pain in the butt. It's flying around. I don't think Dove sees him. Probably doesn't. His Squiddle. I remember Sherman shouting at me. So where was Sherman? There he is. Sherman's coming in. So we, we see this guy. He might have turned his radar on for a minute. We see his uh, his nails, his RWR nails. And we're starting to triangulate his position. And um, so I'm just trying to think. I think I'm going to set Cap up for this. So DeRose has made a beautiful interception of Squiddle. That's great to see. And Dove has indeed seen him. I'm not sure why Dove's not firing. He should be all over that MiG. So that's a bit annoying. Um, Uderosa is chasing Squiddle. Squiddle's just a little too slow. I don't think Squiddle even thinks he's in combat. And hence, yeah, he doesn't even know he's in combat. He's just flying along. Sherman spots the missile. Look at Sherman turning. Almost stalls himself. Oh, over G's. Squiddle. Wow, look at that. Squiddle was lucky. Second missile. Misses as well. Those bloody R60s. Somehow, Squiddle survived. And a third missile. And we're all chasing now to try and get hold of him. Squiddle finally realises he's in trouble. Excuse me, but the uh, MiG-21-700 knots by that point. So that's a good show by Oderosa. Now, we're fully on his tail, though. Um, Dove's finally firing. Um, I get the feeling that Dove was struggling to IFF that as a bad guy, and that's why he hadn't been firing. Um, that's probably what it's all about now. Let's just analyse that shot back there. So, if Squiddle dies, Dove... Oh, okay, I don't have a range. That's three miles, so he's about two miles now. Just maybe within an aim line range. Out comes three aim nines. Uh, basically, find three. If you're going to fire missile, only ever one at once. Uh, three doesn't actually help you help them in any way. Um, and note that two miles was just too much in this case because this guy had 200 knots or 150 knots above Dove. Uh, but he is turning now, which is going to allow us Cap to get a lead on him, and I'm going to try and catch him up. Cap's taking the lead now because Dove's too slow, obviously, in a, in a Harrier. So let's speed that up. Okay, there was an aim 9 there. What was that? So Dove is now 2.5 miles. And he's taking a shot, but if 2 miles was out, then 2.5 miles is definitely going to be too far. So that missile is going to be scrubbed. Would have roasted slow right down, put himself in danger. But it's okay. And now this is a chance for Cap to, Cap to catch up. Now that's 700 knots and coming in. Mile and a half. So now I've got to be... Oh, God. Ah, yeah, so I've made a bad move here. Um, so um, I didn't follow my own advice. My own advice at this point, if I was thinking rationally, would be to uh, go into a, a lag pursuit, which means coming outside his turning circle, um, and, uh, and follow him that way, allowing myself to burn off my speed. But instead, I've gone for a lead pursuit and a snapshot. So I've pulled in, in front of the target, and if you look at my vector, I'm aiming in front of the target because I'm trying to get an intercept point, and that allows me kind of one chance shot at him, basically. As I come in, I can take a one chance shot, and he usually misses because lead pursuit shots usually miss. Um, and then once I've intersected his course, that means puts him in a world of hurt because I'm no longer on, his, on him. Uh, anything can happen. So the lag pursuit would have been a much safer thing to do, and that's what I should have done if I was uh, cleverer. In the heat of the moment, it's always tempting to take this lead. And what I've done, and I should be on the brakes, but I'm, I'm slowing down, but it's too late. It's so slow. He's 350 knots. I'm 600. Nothing I can do to slow 250 knots down in this time. Um, so my gamble of pulling lead has failed. I'm now in a world of pain. I'm slowing down. I've taken my lead shot there, you see, but I've missed, and it's easy to miss because there's such a difference in speeds. He's down at 300 knots. I'm firing at 600 knots. Really hard to um, 
to get a fix on him with the crosshair. Now in a world of pain. Um, I've overshot. Still 200 knots too, too high. So really, the safest thing to do now would be to do a Sherman style. Go up, do a yo-yo, invert, keep an eye on him, and then back down. But because I'm not a particularly good flyer, I'm probably just going to cock it up. So let's see what I do. So I'm going up, so I've done that bit right. I've not rolled over. You see, I've not rolled over properly there. I should have been fully inverted, so the canopy was down, so I could have kept an eye on him. And I haven't got up high enough. I should have done a much, you see, I should have done a much more aggressive up like that. And then over, keeping an eye on him, and then down. But my pull was too puny, and instead I've just gone up slowly and presented myself as a target. Um, so that is literally how to cock up uh, an engagement once you've got the rear end of a target, how to cock up and reverse everything to the hostile advantage. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter here because it's four on one. Um, the red guys are obviously going to die, but it just shows a good example of bad flying. So anyway, so at this point, I'm in trouble. Now... I'm just doubling my... So, at this point, <clears throat> I realize, I should realise that I've cocked up. And I can't power out of this. His jet is as powerful or more powerful than mine. The worst thing I can do now is fly up. Uh, now, I can get away with it in this chart in this time because I've got, now I've got friends coming in. So, at this point, I'm trying to get him visible by pulling him up. But if this was a one-on-one -on -one dogfight, the worst thing I can do is go up. I present myself as a target even more and I burn more and more energy. So, what I should have done is at this point realised I was in trouble, I cocked up, I should have inverted, gone down, burners on, just trying to pick up as much speed as I can with some turns. Um, so everything's going wrong for Gap at the moment. Can I redeem myself? Uh, I've done a reverse, but look at my speed, it's going down, 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 getting towards stall. Pure, yep, pure luck that, that uh, missiles come out and uh, hit him. But it's not enough, those are very tough things. Um, so I've gone high. Udarosa has um, decided to go for lead. He's pulling in front of me and not going as high, which is perfectly acceptable because his speed is even worse than mine. Okay, finally, I'm getting my ass in gear now. Finally, I'm starting to head down, starting to get speed in the jet, and it is allowing me to outrun him. I'm getting speed a lot better. My alpha has been lower. His alpha has been 20 or so. Mine's been 10 or so, and I'm getting speed in the jet now. Now I'm going to do a big pull, and that big pull saved me. Let's have a look at that again. So I've got speed in the jet. I'm just under 400 knots. He's lagging behind because he's just had to do more work to get ahead of me. I had to get a lead on me. I'm going to do a big pull now to make sure that he can't get his leading seat. Uh, you see, all around here, he was pulling lead on me. And I could see that he was aiming to pull lead on me. So if someone's pulling lead on, lead on you like that, and you've got the energy to do so, which I just about had, then it's time for a big pull so to scrub his lead. So if I'm pulling like this in his screen right to left really hard he can't maintain that that lead anymore and he's going to have to take a shot without any lead and what happens when you take a shot without any lead it just flags behind unless it's a super duper carb missile but this is just a normal missile so that was something that i did do right at least i saw him coming for a lead shot and put some angle in there now i put myself in danger again because i'm going up i should be heading back down again now and i've stalled almost Come on, stop this. And luckily, and I've escaped. Uh, he's exited the fight. Again, I've gone up. I don't know why. Really bad flying. And uh, DeRosa just, you know, obviously sees the, sees, the, uh, sees the vultures coming in. Just makes a run for it. And pow, obviously someone's got to get him. Good job, boys. So DeRosa did really well there. Survived for ages. It's good flying, some bad flying. Lots to learn either way. Look, it took six of us to take him down. That's ridiculous. Bloody German. Right, stand by for next engagement. Okay, join us again. Sonic's just made a huge dash through here. He's kept low and far, so no one's picked him up as usual. Uh, so stand by. So, it's deciding to have a pop at the carrier, I think. Or Static, who's coming to land. 60, 60 knots. He's had a pop of the carrier. Ah, he killed someone, look. He killed someone on the carrier. Gumbo. Well done, Sonic. And having a pop at Static. And Stack's down. Two birds with one flight. That's pretty good. Well done. Oh dear. Oh dear, Static is not liking that. She's going down. Crash. So, um, that was a brilliant pass. Ah, someone... Ah, Cap. Yes! Look at Cap. Finally going to do something good. Okay, so. I have... 
So let's just see what happened there. So cat was just in the right place at the right time. Where am I? I see, I see the action. Uh, now speed that up a little bit. Now the disappointing thing is I've done it again. Look, I've gone up high for the turn. No real reason to do that. I mean, technically you can turn around quicker if you go up high, but I just burn all my energy. If what I should have done is kept lateral and uh, and turned like here, like around like that, and then I could have been, you know, four or five hundred knots by now. So by going high, I've just scrubbed all of my speed off and just making everything more difficult for myself and making a harder target. So that was a bit dodgy. On the plus side, um, Sonic hasn't really made a run for it or anything, so I can keep an eye on him. It is. It can be hard to do these manoeuvres. Bear in mind that when I'm going up like this, I'm looking. I'm not looking forward. I'm looking backwards out of the top of the window. Uh, so it can be hard to uh, check your attitude, i.e. whether you're going up or down. And sometimes it is safer just to go up. So that is one excuse for going up. It is a lot safer if you're looking out the top of the cockpit. And when you're doing um, when you're doing any of these moves, you absolutely um, want to keep your eye on the target all the time. You have to have him padlocked, as we call it. So you never get to look at your jet uh, uh, dials or anything like that, or where it's going. You have to do it all by kind of, um, all by you know imagination, because uh, you're you're looking at the back of the plane, at the target. Very important. If you take your eyes off the target, you'll probably never find it again. Right. Anyway, uh, so caps come in. I'm still too slow, but I have got potential energy, gravity, and an awful shot. Absolutely terrible. Not my day, obviously. Let's set this up, shall we? Okay. I've come in to to merge. The problem is I just never got enough speed in the jet. You say because I went so high, I just never got above four hundred knots. And this guy's going six hundred knots, and he's just killed someone else. That being absolutely devilish, and I just cannot get any speed in it. No, something's wrong. Look, my plane's not speeding up. Something's wrong. Weird. Don't know why that happened. I sh I should really be like. For 500 knots by now. So I don't know what went wrong, but something happened. But uh, he's still getting away, I can't catch up. Speed that up. Yeah, I don't know why I'm going so slow, maybe I'm out of gas or something. On the plus side, I'm a mile behind him. I think I'm guns only, so I should be able to start getting shots in soon. P Man's coming in, he knows what he's doing, so I'll start vectoring P Man onto him, onto the hostile. Yep. P-Man's been infected and is joining the fray. Cap's still woefully slow. I'm so, oh, I haven't got burners for some reason. I can't get my burners on, so. I don't have much chance of catching him up, unfortunately. Look, oh, look, I'm doing another lead, so he's turned left around here. And I can't follow around there here because I've got no power for some reason. So this time I'm taking the lead and I might be able to get a shot on him. I can't remember if I do. Look how perfect my vector is just in front of him. Spectre's coming in with a working jet and he is going to overtake me. So Sonic's made the mistake this time. Sonic realises he's in trouble, and Sonic's gone up, and it slowed him down and made him visible. If it had stayed down on the ground, he could have outrun me, because my I couldn't go fast, um, and he probably would have escaped. So now he's got the shows the dangers of going high, even with Fox 2 jets, which can only shoot you know from a couple of miles away. And he's getting slower and slower, and he's going to get some one come and paste him. Looks like Spectre's going to come in. It's been very patient. It's on. A, it's pulled a nice lead. It's got energy on him. Someone's got to shoot him. Cap can't catch up. So Sonic's on his way back down now, but now he's got the world behind him. Come on, Spectre, shoot him. Beautiful merge by Spectre. Look at that right on his trail. P-Man's just going to too slow. Just he hasn't got the jet for this. Still going. Oops, I just realised we're in slow motion. How embarrassing. Right. Sherman's come in. Sherman's merged. Sherman sees what's going on. He's not with it. Oh, my goodness. Another carrier killed by uh, Sonic. We just can't get him. Someone's got to get him. Sherman emerges. We're all, we're all chasing him now. Someone's got to kill him. And an A9 Mike from Uniform Kilo might have him. No, that's missed. Counter measures out by Sonic. Come on. Ah, oh, I've got my planes working again. I'm burning again. So we catch the boys now catching up finally. And that's got to be a kill shot from, from Spectre. And it is. Good kill. Good patience. Well done.
And again, it takes six of us to take him down. That's hilarious. Hold on, boys. Right, this was the final attack by the Reds, I think. Uh, so we've got blue guys here. We've got blue guys outside. It's uh, attacked uh, wingman Tail and Hatsu out in, the, uh, in Tail's usual place. And Tail's going to spot these guys, no doubt, from millions of miles away, even though they're right on the deck. So basically, Tail and Hatsu are zipping up and down and up and down like that to create a, you know, a corridor or a block that the enemies can't get through, and it's worked. He's got bang on. He's seen these guys three miles away. It's going to go in far, about 1.5 miles, again, I imagine. So 1.5 miles is about 1.8 miles, so it might just sneak in front. So they're not really cold targets, they they were flanking targets, so it probably pushes up to about two, two and a half miles maximum shot. And power, lead man down, well done. Gonna move in. Uderosa's now finishes him off. Uderosa's gone um gone defensive. Tail's heading out slowly. So I don't know what he's doing that there. I'm guessing slowing down. That's a bit dodgy. That's a shame because he did really good moves last time. Never mind, it's taking a guy out. It's very dangerous though going four hundred knots in a combat zone. Uderosa is a very formidable guy, and indeed he's got himself in trouble. No, Uderosa's found this guy. Okay, at least Tail was low, and that's what saved him this time. Okay, Uderosa's on Hatsu. Hatsu is dodge right. Probably doesn't know he's being shot at yet. Luckily, these R60 mics aren't the best missiles in the world. That's another one, mile and a half or so. Plenty of lead, but it's easy to... Oh, right, Hatsu's going 700 knots. That's why he's escaping. Right, okay. So the good thing about Hatsu is then, I guess he realises he's in danger, Burner's on, and he's just ran away, and you can do that uh, against short-range jets. Now, for some reason, he's he's done this. I think there was a miscommunication between Tail and Hatsu, and he's he did a, uh, a 9G really aggressive break there. We've got to have a look at that. Okay, so he's escaping. Escaping is perfectly safe, although, to be fair, these guys don't really know that. They can't see the speed, and he gets the call to, um, to break. Because he sees a missile. Oh, yeah. So Tail probably sees that missile. Tails had to break. Had to breaks, but way too aggressively. You're over 10.5 Gs. That's already a passed out pilot. 11 G. Yeah. So he's no longer in control of the plane. And he's a sitting duck, basically. Tails got no missiles, I guess. That'll probably be a hit. He doesn't dodge. No. He's back in control of the jet. He's back in. And ah, oh, but yeah, by that time, Uderosa had caught up. It was a thousand feet behind him or so, and there wasn't much chance. So, okay, that was interesting. Also, uh, another thing to notice there: Hatsu also new cappy thing of when he broke, he went up, making himself very vulnerable. Uh, the plus side that is, again, it was safe. So even though he passed out, he survived that because he was going up. Uh, however, it put himself um, much more vulnerable, as we talked about. So really, if he should have broken level or low. Um, that's what he should have done. And he would have stood a much better chance of surviving. But going up always ends this way. It, the target, the chaser will always close up on you. Anyway, so that's that. Um, Uderos got the kills, coming back down. Tail going to aggress. Tail is not aggressing. Yeah, Tail is aggressing. Bringing in an ex-commander as well. Let's run that through a little further. Ah. Uderosa has... Just, I don't know why he crashed here. He's not over -G'ing. He just was flying too low and hit the ground. So, never mind. It happens to everyone. Ah, um, and the Vigans are on their final attack. Um, this time, they are going high. Um, Vigans aren't the best planes in the world at going high, but they can... Go relatively fast. So let's see what happens. Who's going to be the first one up? I guess it's going to be Tail again. Yeah, you can see there, Tail spotted the hostiles and um, he's called them into everyone, and we can see their cons now. And you can see the problem is he was down on the deck when he saw them, energy low, and he's somehow got to climb up to Angels 25 right up here. So you can see him kind of circling, slowly gaining altitude, but I don't think he's ever going to get up in there in time. These vegans are 600 knots, nearly, nearly Angels 30. So. 
um, uh, Sherman's been told about it and he's getting up uh, in advance, which is what you need to do. You need to get up in advance. Spectre's getting up in advance. Uh, Cap's going up now. Sherman might just make it. Tail's struggling. <laughs> he's trying to get speed up now so we can do another pull. Look at Sherman go. Wonder Man. He's... It was a perfectly valid shot, it just never got lock. Um done that a couple of times now. And now his job is to merge in formation with them, and he can stop picking them off. Okay, we've got another shot. Uh, that was King going for a shot, the same thing. It just never really seemed to get hold of the target. Or maybe didn't have enough lead on that. Sherman is within Fox range, but I'm guessing now he's guns only. Um, Sherman is not catching up either, the figures are still too fast. Uh, Spectre's up there. Tail finally made it up to Angel's 23, but he's stalling his jet load. It's down to 200 and something, so he never really, never really got hold, never really got there. Didn't have enough energy. Spectre's in and merged. King's in and merged. Sherman is catching and will start spraying when he's in range. The rest of us are coming up. Uh, Uniform Kilo's coming up. Cap's coming up. Gumbo's all coming up. Got a massive ambitious shot from Gumbo there. And it is a head on shot, so you can shoot from range. Um, with a head-on shot, and it might even make it look beautiful. Oh, it missed! It missed. Unlucky. It had the trajectory. It had the power. Uh, Sherman's spraying and praying. Trash is now dodging a belly shot from Gumbo, and that can work. Yep. Very all planes are very susceptible to belly shots. Um, and blood's destroyed. I guess Sherman's still spraying. Caps in a spraying. Trash has got a world of pain on him. Uh, Spectre is shooting another one at blood. That's probably going to finish him off if he's not already dead. And Kapow, beautiful work. Odd just made it through. Cap has gone high. Oh, right, I'm finally doing something useful. And I'm now um, I've uh, yo-yoed over this guy. And now I'm going to try and fall in on him. Oh, I've lagged out. I'm back. Uh, whatever happened... Whoa, this guy's getting chased. Poor old tender's getting chased by three. Uh, which should we watch first? Cap's not doing very well, so let's watch this one first. So, Tender made a dive down, which is a sensible thing to do. Down gives you speed, and speed is good. However, two boys, three boys have spotted him. Kilo, Commander, everyone's lagging out. There's a big lag spike, and King. King's the only one that's really kept the chase going. Beautiful work by King. Matching speed perfectly. All very good. Just needs the shot now. Is within a thousand feet. Pion just didn't have enough lead for that. Didn't have enough lead again. Meow. Wouldn't mind having a look at these G forces actually. Let's uh, load them up. So as they come down, uh, they are 650 not a piece. Start to mount on a small amount of alpha. No, there's not much. There's not much loaded on there. Oops, done it too slow again. Up to 7G seven, seven for King there, so they're starting to black out almost. So we've got a reverse here. King's still under G. Okay, so we just saw just under 9G there for King. So King was right on the limit of what, what he could handle there. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to black out from them. I doubt it, but it may lose him to make him lose situational awareness a bit. We'll see. 9G, Tender just hit 9G, so they're both absolutely on the limit of their planes at the moment. 6G left, King's sticking with it, 7G all the way. And it's really hard to hit when someone's so wiggly and pulling so much G, it's really hard to get enough lead for those guns to actually hit. Still with him, 900 feet, 7G, 6G, and we've got a hit. They're still both relatively energy high. They're going to slowly get down lower and lower. But And we've got an overshoot. We had an overshoot there by King. Into rolling scissors. Uh, Tender makes an exit to the right. Uh, it's borne him some, a few thousand feet, which is going to help him survive. So now it's speed. Um, and Tender's got more of it. So can Tender gone through a little... Mountain, but the king is building up more speed now. He's going to start catching up and he's taken lead through that turn and caught him up. Three down to 3,000 feet. Catching up more. Oops, should have done it in the first place. 
Okay, uh, King has... What happened there? King just lost its royal earnest there for a minute. So the chase was going well. Just trying to keep as fast as they can at the moment. Both getting speed, both 600 knots, both accelerating. King just did something there. He went to minus 4G, I, I saw. Minus 4G, which is enough to pass you out. And I think it's passed out now. No? Yep, I think it's passed out. See that? He went minus 4G there, and I think, and that's why he's just flying along now. And I think he's back. Yep, he's back. Reacquired, so that's nice flying. Shows how easily you can over-G just by dipping your nose down a bit. Anyway, we're back. We're down to 1, uh, 2,000 feet. Massive chase has been going for ages. Amazing to run out of guns. Somehow the Vigan hasn't outsped him. So the more nimble F5 has managed to keep him in the chase. Ah, oh, finally he's dumped his missile. See, so uh, Tender had kept his uh, bombs. So that's why he was so slow. He finally got rid of his bombs. Maybe too late by now. Let's hit again. Done a massive pull up. Dangerous though, going up. We've learnt how dangerous going up is. Both slowing down. King's taking a nice lead there. It's gained him a few feet. Just about within guns range now. Then just going down. Can try to get speed up. This vegan can outspeed him now. Or oh, just in time before he outsped him. What a great fight that was. Very good. And finally, I think there was Cap's fight, which is still going on. So it's Cap's fight. I came in, and I came in just too slow. I'd done the big climb, and for whatever reason, I just hadn't maintained enough energy. Now I've got to do um, a turning climb and try and keep up with the vegan, and I just can't do it. See, my speed's going down, actually, rather than up. So all I can do is try and turn inside him. I don't think a lag pursuit is going to work here. It's just such a big high turn. And so I'm trying to turn inside him, but maintain my speed. And it is working. I'm up to 500 knots, but I can't compete with a straight Vigan, which is going 700 plus knots. Great work from Trash there. Snuck through everyone. Oh, look, someone hit. I never knew about the Odge attack here. He's come in. He's made it through. Didn't get that on camera. And he has... Dropped his bombs and dive bomb. No, beautiful bomb drop. Well done, Odge. Didn't know that happened. Okay, that's pretty cool. But he's got P man on him. Okay, that was a nice big attack. And another couple of subs were taken out. Look, I'm full burners, but I just can't catch up with this guy. Trash is going to get bombers on target. Let's see if he hits. Charging down at 590 knots. Bombs away. Right down the line of subs. That is going to be devastating. One, two, two. Another two down. It's probably all of the subs down now, realistically, realistically, I think. The plus side is at to slow down to do the turn. Cap's pulling massive lead. I finally got up to 700 knots. I can start closing up now. Putting a big lead. Not to shoot, but just to catch up. And we are now within some useful range. 3,000 feet turn fight. Trash is going high, always a dangerous thing to do. He does have a clean vigor now, though, so he will be able to go fast. He kept slowing down, just can't get the power in. Okay, I cut a little bit under his arch, so that gives me a little bit more... It means I don't shave off quite so much speed. And I'm slowly getting it down to two and a half thousand. And I'm now gaining speed. Slightly more nimble, this F5 in a turn. So, do this. I'm starting to call every, all the boys in, look. In they come. I've just got to keep him busy. I'm now in a safe lag pursuit. You see, I'm turning outside him now. Not going to fall for the same trick as last time. And pow. The boys come in. Okay. Lovely work. Beautiful shot. Uniform Kilo did well. P-Man did well. Uh, Tail did well. So, we've got some, we've got some really good fighting everyone. We did have three team kills apparently but I didn't see any of them there so you guys got away with it and that is the end. That was um, a really cool fight well done to everyone who took part and uh, lots of stuff done wrong lots of stuff done right as usual but we'll just keep learning. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you later